ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه all praises due to allah we praise him we seek his assistance and we ask his forgiveness ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا and we seek refuge with allah from the evil within our souls and the consequences of our bad deeds may yahdihi allah fala mudilla lah Whosoever Allah guides, no one can lead astray. And whosoever He allows to go astray, then none can guide. And I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of our worship except Allah alone with no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a slave and his messenger. May Allah exalt his mention, may Allah grant him peace, his companions and all those who follow them on their righteous path until the day of judgment. You would expect every Muslim to know that the religion of Islam, the deen of Islam is the deen of Tawheed. No Muslim, whether born Muslim or a revert to Islam, can be counted a Muslim unless he has the most basic understanding of things, which is Islam is the deen of Tawheed, which means to worship Allah alone, to worship none along with Him. Not, not just that you worship Allah. There must be another element of what? Not worshiping others with Him. فَمَن يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ فَمَن يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ إِسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى you have to disbelieve in all false gods and then single out Allah in worship, then and only then a person is a Muslim in the ultimate sense. Otherwise, if someone said, I would worship Allah, like the kuffar uh, proposed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu you know, we worship Allah, your God, one year and you will worship ours the next year. So Allah revealed the Surah Al-Kafirun, which everyone knows. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُوا مَا تَعْبُدُونَ Until the end of the surah, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَ دِينَ Doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. That's a basic understanding of every Muslim. And we cannot afford, or nor can we claim to be Muslims, unless we know that. Now, if this is the case, and it is the case, then that entails that we understand the concept of slavery which is proportional to the understanding of our Islam. The more someone understands Islam, the more someone will enslave himself, is, is enslave himself or herself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a slave, each one of us, or as slaves, we have no right, no right to worship Allah in a manner which He did not prescribe. We don't have such authority. We do not have the authority to say, I will worship Allah in this particular fashion. As a slave, no such right. Now, if one of us was a master, and he created his own world, his own universe, his own everything, and then in that creation of his, he wanted to run business the way he likes, we say, go ahead. If anyone, and no one can do that, by the way, because Allah already told us, no one can create but him. If one can, wants to create his own creation, then tell them, worship me however you like, then that's their business. But that doesn't happen. In the deen of Allah, there's no such thing. Allah asked in this rhetorical fashion, or do they have partners which legislate for them in the religion that which Allah did not permit? Is this possible that they bring their own partners who will legislate into the deen? No. No, it's unacceptable. So the deen and part of our slavery to Allah is that we submit and we follow the Qur'an and the Sunnah strictly. We have no right, no authority to propose anything into the religion. If we do, then we need to study Islam from scratch. We need to learn Islam all over again. Because many Muslims need to study Islam from the beginning. Furthermore, no Muslim denies that dua everyone knows what dua means who can give me an english word for it invocation. supplication another one Invoc invocation invoking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we agree on that okay 
That, is it part of Islam or not? Is it important or يعني, you know, something minor or major? <coughs> major. In fact, Fatiha is a dua. Salah is a dua. And the dua is a dua. In Hajj, you do dua. In almost every act of worship, dua is somewhere there. Either directly <coughs> or indirectly. طيب. If this is the case, then as we explained earlier, per our understanding of slavery to Allah, we cannot then do dua unless it is according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Because it's an act of worship and we don't have the right to propose or produce or innovate anything new into the deen. And dua is one of the most important acts of worship. So we must definitely strive as Muslims to keep, to make sure our dua is harmonious with the Quran and the Sunnah. Don't bring anything new. Otherwise, it may backfire. Now, the dua must be in accordance with the teachings of Islam. In its words, the words, the terminology, the concepts, the concepts in the dua themselves, the uh, implications of the dua itself, everything must be perfectly harmonious with the teachings of Islam. None of these aspects can be ignored. Say, well, yeah, okay, I can do this, but the concept can be a Christian-based one. And we will see as we discuss how many of the Christian and Hindu-based ways of supplicating to their gods have been integrated with the teachings of Islam by the Sufis and the grave worshippers and the likes and so that you know dua was no longer the way of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it's the dua of the Christians but in Islamic terminology and we will see how dangerous that is now Tawassul if you got the SMS or the email or you saw the flyer you saw the Arabic word written in English words Tawassul and many people wonder, what is tawassul? I'm not going to give you the de definition yet. But let us say in the beginning, tawassul is one fundamental aspect of dua. One of the elements of the dua is that of tawassul. And we will see how exactly we can apply it according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Now you must know, my brothers and sisters in Islam, that the issue of tawassul is quite a controversial issue in Islam. There's a lot of, there's vast difference uh, between the, the, the people, the Muslims. Uh, however, the difference is not necessarily valid. Not every time there's a difference, then we can consider that difference to be valid. Muslims, in the Sunni and Shia, differ on almost every aspect of the deen. Can we make their, these differences valid? No. When the Shia differ with us on something, it's like, who cares? Who cares? Look who's differing. Their differing does not even constitute anything in Islam. Because these are people of desires, people of innovation, people of fabrication, people who lie. And we will have a special lecture about the Shia inshallah eventually. But for now, we don't consider that difference to be valid, period. So where did we differ? We didn't differ on the valid tawassul. There are three kinds of tawassul. There are three kinds of tawassul. Valid, acceptable, lawful, one which we will learn from the Quran and the Sunnah, one which is shirki, shirk based, uh, polytheistic, if we call it tawassul, and we had dealt with this in our previous.